Hello everyone and welcome to this new tutorial of Plexus. So today we're gonna make a water tank. We're gonna calculate the water tank on Plexus. But before I start, if you're into engineering, geotechnical engineering and learning, just subscribe to this YouTube channel. It will be a great help for you. So let's start. In this video, we'll make a circular tank. A large circular water tank just like this one. A rectangular water tank is usually not that common because the circular shape gives more volume for the water and less volume for the concrete. So this is why generally we, generally we make circular tank. And as for uh, the strains and everything, it's better, uh, better divided on, on the surface of the water tank. So the forces are equally divided on the surface. This is why we usually use a circular water tank for the stress and for the volume of the water. So uh, this is the exercise. It's a flexible tank foundation on elastic saturated soil. So in this tutorial, I will use Plexus 3D. So this is a advanced tutorial. If you're a beginner, I've made a lot of videos for beginners. You can watch them before trying this tutorial. And if you're not a beginner, I leave a copy of this PDF in the description box. You can download it and draw everything in it. It's very easy. So a circular tank with a radius R equal to 23.35 is founded on an elastic saturated soil. This is very important. It's an elastic soil. The tank imposes vertical stress equal to 260 kN per square meter at the soil surface. So this is for Plexus 2D. In Plexus 2D, we will model it as a axiometry model, axiometric model, because it's a circular tank. In Plexus 3D, we will all we will only model a quarter of the geometry. We can model all the geometry, but it's time consuming and computer consuming. So uh, the PC, the computer, will take more time calculating the results. So these are the materials. It, the soil is linear. It's undrained because it's an undrained elastic soil. It's saturated. And uh, these are the properties of the soil. So let's start. This is the soil. We can see that uh, the soil is undrained. The structure. So we will draw a quarter of a circle here by this command, the poly line, uh, the poly curve. After drawing half uh, a quarter of the circle, we will extract it to make a volume. After we make a volume, it will be this will be the volume, the foundation of our uh, water tank. It's four meter. Here we can see. Uh, the volume here. Then we've put a surface load. This is the surface load. Here we've put it equal to minus one. We'll change it, of course, in the calculation. After we've generated a mesh, we went to stage construction. So here there's two phases. As usual, uh, as usual, I've made the calculation for the two phases to spare some time. So in the initial phase, it's the K0 procedure. We, only, we almost always use it, or the K0 or the gravity. It's, uh, it's evenly the same. I've made the video about what's the difference between them. And then we're going to make a plastic analysis. So let's see the results. So the purpose of all this exercise is to do a comparison between a analytical model and a plexus model. So the analytical model that will be used is this one. Uh, it's given by uh, this writer here. You can find the formulas. This is the graph. This is how we'll obtain the deformation. So it's a uh, analytical model. It's a comparison between the analytical model and the finite element model in Plexus. So these are the two books that you can see, Geotechnical Engineering, Balkema. So these are the two references.
this is the geometry we can see here the total displacement okay so this is the initial phase this is phase one after we've put the load then the initial phase is the only the soil and the phase one we've put the load on the surface so i will make a section and use it to leave from here to here okay so i do it zero zero and one zero I will press on Ctrl plus just see okay so now we can see the deformation I just rotate it this is the soil under the tank you can see how the displacement will be to zero when it's uh, past the tank and here approaching the tank you can see how we'll get a larger displacement until arriving at the center which is here this is the tot the most uh, displacement under the tank so This is the effective stress also. You can see the effective, effective stress under the tank. So you should know that it's very important to know how to model it. So this is why in 3D, we've modeled a quarter of the water tank and in 2D, we've modeled an axiometric uh, model. Here, we can see the difference between Plexus 2D and 3D. There's an error of 0 0.3 and 1.6, which is nothing with the method described in these two books. So if you have any question, just leave them in the description box. And this is it for today. Stay tuned for more videos.